More information about the RTX 5090 was revealed and guys, it's looking really good. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10, just search Activate Under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. Okay, so yes, the RTX 5090, the GPU that everybody is waiting for if you're into high-end PC gaming, and we're waiting for it for a good reason, because all of the original specs and information that we've gotten about the 5090 is pointing towards a card that's going to be incredibly powerful and possibly one of the largest jumps that we've seen in GPU history. And last time, kind of a similar situation happened. We saw a massive performance increase going from the RTX 3090 to the RTX 4090, and they didn't even give us the full GPU die. We could have gotten an even more powerful GPU. Looks like the same thing's gonna be happening this time around with some really, really crazy GPUs coming out. I didn't think this would happen back to back, but the evidence is pointing towards this actually being the case. Now, before we get more into the performance of the RTX 5090, let's quickly take a look at this information that was just posted online. Now, I got this from videocards.com, but it was originally posted over on Chip Hell by the leaker Panzer Lied. And according to him, it looks like the RTX 5090 is apparently gonna be having a base clock of 2.9 gigahertz. Now I want you guys to really think about this because the RTX 4090 is around 2.2 gigahertz. To be exact, it's 2.235. And if we take 2.9 over 2.235, we get a difference of roughly 30%. That's right, the base clock of the RTX 5090, if this leak turns out to be true, could be 30% higher on the RTX 5090. And who knows what the boost clock and how the boost boosting algorithm is going to work beyond that. So that's already looking pretty crazy, but we do have to keep in mind that according to leaks and rumors, the full RTX 5090 die will have 192 SMs, which you can think of the streaming multiprocessors or SMs as the cores on the GPU. Well, the current RTX 4090 only has 128 of them. That's an increase of 50%. And we don't add percentages, guys we multiply them. What that means is that the RTX 5090 in its full largest form would be an insane 1.95 times faster on paper than the RTX 4090. And that's not even accounting for ray tracing as it is likely we will be seeing an increase of roughly 30% better ray tracing per core on the RTX 50 series, bringing the total performance of ray tracing on the RTX 5090 Ti, or if it is just an RTX 5090, using the full die up to over 2.5 times the amount of performance than the RTX 4090. To be exact, we're talking about 2.525 times the ray tracing performance. To put that into perspective, if you were barely running a path tracing game at 30 FPS, well, you get an RTX 5090 Ti or 5090, whatever they decide to call it, and you go from 30 FPS to 76 frames per second. That's, in my opinion, unplayable to playable, or maybe the game was running at 60 FPS with DLSS, and now you go from 60 FPS all the way up to 152 frames per second. That's going from playable to a very, very good experience, on PC at 4K, and that is absolutely wild. Now, to be fair, I do wanna temper your guys' expectations because first of all, do we know if this is true? No, we don't, it could end up not being true. I think it's probably pretty likely that it'll be true, but remember, do take this with a grain of salt. It is just a leak on the internet. But the second thing I wanna to bring to your guys' attention is that the RTX 5090 that we'll likely see first is likely to be cut down from 192 to 168 SMs streaming multiprocessors or cores. Now that is only roughly 31% higher than the RTX 4090, so multiplying those two, and we're talking about a GPU which would be in terms of regular raster, non-ray trace performance, around 70% faster than the RTX 4090. Now in terms of ray tracing, you'd still be talking about over two times the performance in theory. However, even in a worst case scenario, even if ray tracing doesn't improve at all per core, getting 70% more performance in an RTX 5090, 
I think that's a really solid result, and if the price is reasonable to an extent, I guess, the 5090, I think, is gonna be a great path for an upgrade for those of you out there looking to run your games at the maximum, maximum setting. Now, the question is, how's this gonna trickle down to the RTX 5080, 5070, 5060, all those cards? I'll be sure to keep you guys updated on that as I get more information, as I think that's gonna be the really, really interesting part here for those of you looking to buy a far more affordable card, but considering that that's going up probably a minimum of 70% on paper, now we'll have to see how it translates to gaming, well then I would expect that hopefully the rest of the lineup does also see a 70% uplift. But let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. Do you think that NVIDIA really will give you 70% more performance for the same price, or hey, maybe even lower, or do you think that that's just being absolutely delusional and they're gonna jack up prices and try and make the gap between the 90 class and the 80 class even larger. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.